Good day, everybody. This is Rob Mazak. I am a psychic medium who does many different podcasts, a lot of different talks, a lot of different subjects, primarily around metaphysical and spiritual. However, mine is going to be kind of a mix this evening, today, on this podcast. And as usual, we're going to take an idea or ideas and we're just going to let it roll and see where it takes us. No scripts. No reading, none of that. So just talking or speaking from the heart. So I learned some interesting things about myself over the last, I don't know, couple months, three months now. And most of those lessons, those hard lessons, at least for me, came at the expense of playing on a particular sports team. I am a soccer player. Primarily a goalkeeper. I've been doing that for quite a while and pretty decent at it, actually. Obviously not perfect. Otherwise, I'd probably be in a professional league. Even though I'm 64, I I don't know if that exists or not. That'd be kind of cool if it did. However, I do enjoy playing soccer and I go out there to play hard and to play my best and give the team as much of me as I can. However, I'm there to have fun, get some exercise, because let's be honest, most of us won't exercise at that level all by ourselves. I do exercise quite a bit, but not in that respect. I don't do a lot of high-end aerobic stuff on my own, uh, other than, you know, distance walking, things like that. But the high pace, high high, uh, activity, quick movements, I don't really do that by myself. It's kind of feels strange to do that so anyway that gives me an opportunity to get out there and keep my quote-unquote cat-like reflexes going we all make mistakes and we should make mistakes because perfection would be really boring to be honest it is nice to have really good games because I've had quite a number of those over this season I played for several teams I've had games where I've had 17 saves Uh, that was probably the most I've probably ever had And, you know, they still scored on me, I think, a a goal on that game. However, that's okay. I'm not really worried about score because it's an amateur league. And, you know, if we win, we win. We lose, we lose. I'm not saying I go out there with nonchalant and don't care. That's not the point. But the point is we're out there to have some fun. And that's really what it's about. We shouldn't be out there criticizing each other and putting each other down. So the team that – one of the teams I was playing on, rather – was very toxic in my opinion. It didn't seem like it mattered what I did in the goal, whether I threw the ball out or I punted the ball. It was wrong either way. If I played my line or came out a lot, it was either way was wrong. If I talked to my players or I didn't talk to my players, it was wrong. Nobody listened to me anyway. So it was really odd. And one of the things I discovered is that the saying that my mother used to tell me is actually true. That, you know, if you hang around them boys long enough, you're going to become just like them. And so in in that respect or that aspect, when you hang around or you embed yourself or allow yourself to be surrounded by negativity, eventually it will get to you. I don't care how strong you are. And I'm pretty strong emotionally. But when you spend several months going to game after game where you're criticized for every single thing you do, you will eventually, and I fell prey to it, you will eventually live up to the expectations that the team or the group that you're hanging out with expects you to rise to. And in this case, they didn't expect anything but mistakes. And so I apparently I ended up giving those to them. In the last game I played for them, one of the guys passed the ball back to me because I, you know, I, I was an option. And I'm not sure how it happened. I wish I'd had a video going. But that ball went right past my foot and right into the goal. And it was, it just set the team into this downward spiral that day. He pulled me out of the goal. They told me I was basically done for the game and didn't didn't play anymore. I ended up leaving early, you know, because of the 
the high emotions that were going on that seemed to be surrounding my action. But what I realized, it really wasn't about what I did wrong so much as I put the last trash can into the dump truck of problems that the team had been having for a while, apparently. Because my understanding about the second half that I wasn't there for was that there was at least one other, if not a couple of people that left the game as well. It just really turned the team in a wrong direction. And to me, that's usually a sign that there's always been problems and there's problems within, very inherent problems, if you will. And it really wasn't about me, but I did take it personally. I mean, can you imagine that you allowed your own teammate to score, essentially, because of a mistake that you made? Really a rookie mistake, to be honest. It's very difficult not to take it personally. And I did for a while. The longer that I looked at that, meditated on it, thought about that, pondered on it. I really, it took me some time, but I began to realize that the problem with the, this whole problem rather, was not really about me. I just happened to hit the start button. As I decided I was, you know, I had a conversation with the captain and we were going to, you know, I explained what was going on and why, why I was finding myself in, in a slump, I guess you'd say, because if you compare my experiences on the other teams I play on, I flourish. I do well because I don't get the same treatment. I'm not saying I'm not open to criticism, but there is a point where it is over the top. And it's really, I don't know about you guys. I do not work off of negative criticism, right? I work off of constructive criticism. If you pull me aside on something, on anything, even in life or at work, and talk to me like a regular person say hey you know this is what i've noticed this is what i i think maybe you should try but to to yell at you and glare at you the whole game because of of mistakes that you make and even remind you of your mistakes that you've made before the game even starts once again you're going to live up to their expectations and that's exactly what happened to me not an excuse i'm not giving up uh, i'm just transferring to a different team because I, I don't think that allowing yourself to stay in a negative environment is very healthy. And we're going to circle, circle back on that, of course. But the thing is that I and you and everybody out there really needs to be careful what you allow to linger in, in your life. And we all like to hang on to things for many reasons. Sometimes it's a comfort zone. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to give up. I don't want to look weak. I don't want to appear that I'm not trying. You know, maybe things will get better. I know they'll get better. You, you give too many chances sometimes. And there does come a time when it's time to just walk away from things. And that, to be honest, is probably one of the hardest things in life to figure out, to learn, to assess, to actually do. Now, in relationships, it's even even worse. But then we'll circle back on that. Sorry, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. And so I decided I was going to stick it out, at least for the next practice that we have and the last game. Because there was one more game this season, which would have been tomorrow. But when I went to practice, normally there's about 20 people or more. It's, it's a lot of fun. Nobody cares because it's just practice and you know, everybody laughs about mistakes or whatever. But there was only about seven or eight people that showed up. And then it just felt so awkward. It's like I was, I don't know. It was like I, I stuck out like a sore thumb. And I tried hard. I hustled. I played well in practice. But even in practice, I was finding people that were, were giving me or criticizing me. It's like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, why am I putting myself through this? What is it I'm trying to prove? Am I trying to prove to them that I'm worthy? Or am I trying to prove to myself that I'm worthy? I really had to sit down and analyze that and really look at it when, in fine detail. Because it, it just 
I don't know. It kept me up at night, and I'm not usually like that. I don't usually worry about things. I don't dwell on things. I don't allow things to bother me like that. But for some reason, this was just kicking me in the butt. And one of the things I got during a, or at least a short meditation this week, because this week's been kind of crazy at work, my guides were telling me that, my guide rather, was telling me that this is exactly what I needed to quote unquote wake myself up because I was falling prey to all the things I tell people to avoid and to watch out for. And here I was going through it myself. And even though I recognized it, I wasn't stepping away like I really should have probably earlier on. And I now looking back at it, it really was the wrong team to be on because I didn't really do a proper assessment either because the only experience I had with them for, I don't know, a month, I guess, before the season started was those weekly practices. And they were a lot of fun. Nobody cared. We had some hot dogs after or sausages, whatever. But then when we got out to the games, it was like Jekyll and Hyde. It was like, I have never seen grown men act like these people, like that this game rested on our survival or we were going to be put in front of a firing squad if we lost. I mean, it was that kind of attitude. And I couldn't believe that people were that, oh, I don't know, egregious or angry about the the craziest things. And it was really funny because I'm sure you guys have seen this dynamic as well. You know people that can get away with all kinds of things. You know, they can make all kinds of mistakes, and everybody just pats them on the back and laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? It seems like there was myself and a couple of other people that just seemed to take the brunt of all of this negativity. And it is crazy how some people get the bad end of the stick and others don't. And I've not really entirely figured that out. You know, and there's some ideas I have on that for myself, but it's just blows my mind that I can sit back there in that goal and watch everybody make horrible passes, passes to the wrong team, you know, overshoot somebody, do the same thing I did. You know, the ball goes right past them. They kick wild shots. They miss wide open shots in front of the goal. And nobody says anything to them like they were saying to me and some of these other people on the team. Yeah, I don't I don't understand it entirely. But you know, actually when I look back at my life, I think that it's probably been happening for most of my life, at least in sports. I mean, because it doesn't happen in my professional life, it doesn't happen in my business life or any of those things. But something about being on the sports field, I seem to be the one that people like to do that to. And I'm sure there's something to that you know why is it that that energy is being drawn to me I'm still working that out but I also know that there are scenarios or events or relationships or things that are going on in our life that we don't necessarily need to continue to hang on to just because right let's look at relationships I mean, I talked about this before. Most of my clients are women, females. And not that I advertise it that way. It's just kind of what the way it works. And I'm not sure why. However, well, I do know why, but that's a different topic of conversation. What I have found over all the years with talking with, with women that have been in relationships for a long time and the relationships at least in their opinion, are horrible. And sometimes, in my opinion, they're horrible. And or other people's opinions. But regardless, the, the relationship is very toxic. It is not welcoming. It is not worthy of what, the, what it should be. It is not really bringing any advantageous energy to the woman. And it's like they just... I don't know, most women, and I'm not saying this about everybody, but all, a lot of the clients that I talk to, they just seem to hang on to that relationship. And for a lot of reasons, I finally 
you know, after about a year of doing this, I finally started asking, so why is it that you're still with this dude or this person? And the, the answer that I predominantly began to receive was that if the relationship fails, I feel like it is because of, it is my fault, sorry, that it is my fault. And I really had to work my way around that or wrap my head around that, do a little research, talk to more of my clients. And what it seems or it appears to be or the predominant idea or finding that I have discovered is that women are generally wired for a global con connectivity in this reality. You know, they have a global consciousness when it comes to being here on this earth. And in caveman days, that was important because the men still wired the same way like this, you know, provide, protect, provide, protect. You know, they kept the, the, the woman, the women and the children from being eaten by tigers and they can go out and get food. And the women took care of the rest. And that's a large percentage of the emotional part of the relationship. And in many ways, women and men are wired the same way. And so when a relationship fails, women feel very ultimately responsible. Even if it's their idea to break it off, finally, it still weighs on them for a long, long time. And it just really affects any future relationships. And so we all do that. We all hang on to things a lot longer than we need to or we should. And I'm not saying we should just give up when things get a little hard. I'm not saying that at all. Because I've been playing goalkeeper, for example, for 13 years. If I was going to run away all the time, I, I wouldn't be playing it anymore. Sometimes you just have to find the right team or the right man or the right woman or the right job. Oh my gosh, I mean, we hang on to things forever. And some of that comes down to that familiar arity of the known whether it's a toxic thing or environment or a bad situation it's predictable you know stepping out into the unknown breaking off a relationship quitting a team you know we have no idea what the other side of that decision is going to look like and it scares most people it seems that most people would rather relish in the bad relationship bad team bad job, instead of stepping out into the scary unknown. I don't know which is scarier, to be honest. But I can tell you, when you do finally make that decision, which I did, I did actually officially quit the team. I'm not going to go play the next game. I came off the roster, and I'm now on a different team. And it's just, it. the feeling is so light and so refreshing and so wonderful actually that I finally quit stressing about how I'm going to appease these people the horrible feelings of showing up on the field with that team knowing that I'm going to feel extremely lousy and I don't know what depressed is the right word but very down my performance will be lousy and I don't have that feeling now. Now, I'm not saying with the new team or the other team that I'm currently on that I'm going to be perfect. I'm just saying I'm going to be way more motivated. I'm going to be way more pumped up. I'm going to play a lot harder because I don't have the same dynamic that I had on the other team. And it is very freeing. So I encourage everybody to really assess things in their life and begin to analyze what those things in your life are bringing you are those things that you allow to stay in your life to be in your life are they supporting your goals where you would like to go in life are those people or those jobs or those scenarios or those teams or whatever are they are they throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it right in the words of Will Smith, you know, you have to really take stock and look at where you're at. 
are you settling for the familiar because that's all you've known and that's your comfort zone and you're not even paying attention to that. Most of us don't even realize we're doing it. You know, I'll be honest, at first I didn't realize I was catering to that on this team. I just thought I was, you know, needed to work harder, practice more, do whatever. And, of course, I do. But it turned out to not be the problem or the point. I'm not taking myself out of that equation at all because I do make mistakes and I will make mistakes because if you're not making mistakes, you're simply not trying. You know, the only way to become better is to fail. I mean, it's just the way it is. And we all find ourselves in life in those situations. The real trick and the real question then is, when is the right time to walk away? I don't think I have the entire direct and correct and accurate answer that really comes down to you. And sometimes we get stuck in situations that we cannot necessarily just walk away from. If you're working at a job that's toxic and it's a hostile work environment, similar to my team perhaps, and you desperately need to have the money that you get from that job, because if you walk away, you may not get a job with the same pay and you may not even be able to acquire a new job and so then you have a real dilemma don't you you have a real dilemma where you you have to learn how to fight through the negativity and the toxicity and you can manage you can get by I mean I imagine if I stuck with this particular team you know, I'm sure it would have figured itself out and we would have worked it out. But I'm, you know, at this age of my life that, you know, I just, just don't have time for for that. I, I don't want to make time. Sorry, I have time. I don't want to make time for negativity in my life. It's just not, not my idea of a good time. But when we get stuck in, like, the job scenario, I absolutely get it. Because I've worked for some people, especially in the military, that were just the most horrible people in the world. And there I couldn't quit. But if I could quit, I didn't have anything to go to. And so we find ourselves in these problems and these situations where it's like just so dreadful. And so we have to do a couple of different things. We have to figure out perhaps why we're allowing that. And it may be because we need the money. But the other question is why aren't we going out then if that's the case? And figuring out how we're going to create new skill sets, you know, maybe more college, maybe another trade school, or learn something new, or polish up your resume and start seeking something different. Because if you don't start doing that, you're going to find yourself 10 years from now in the same job and the same stupid people, and you are going to be a hot mess and a hot wreck. And you're going to be no further in life than you were 10 years prior. So there's no sense in living life in a toxic or hostile environment if there's a way to change it. Of course, there always is a way. And I get it. We can't always just go, you know, screw you guys. I'm out like I did with my soccer team. I mean, how much is that really going to affect me? It's just, you know, a recreational league. Competitive, yes, but just recreational. So it's not going to affect my life you know, monetarily or anything like that. I'm talking about those decisions that are very, very tenuous. And sometimes we find ourselves in relationships, in a marriage or, well, you know, where there's kids involved. Oh my gosh, you know, I don't know how many couples I've talked to that have simply stayed together because they have kids and they don't want their kids to be well, let's just say they don't want them to experience an unnormal life. They want to have as much of a normal life as they can so they get old enough that they can take care of themselves, move on to college, get a job, whatever. And then we can go ahead and separate or divorce. And I don't know how many people do that, and it's just so miserable. And I did it too. I am not pointing fingers. I did it too. And I can understand that dynamic because when you have responsibilities 
to provide for people, to provide for family, to emotionally, financially, spiritually, whatever, all of that, it's very difficult to just walk away, even though sometimes that feels like the right thing to do. And the other thing you have to evaluate too is, is the problems that are going on in any relationship or any scenario or situation, is it really the other person's or the other people's issues or is it really your issue was the issue of me being picked on quote unquote really coming from the players or was it becoming from the energy that I'm putting out because that's what I've been used to my whole life you know being picked last for any sports team you know when I get on a team they don't want me to play they hardly let me play and you know you just find yourself in this conditioning and perhaps that's what's going on, right? And you have to really drill down into the real eaches of what's going on and make an accurate assessment. In this case, it, it made more sense for me to walk away and find a team that's actually fulfilling or lifting me up or at least not knocking me down. Personally, I don't need accolades. I just don't need people to beat me down for mistakes that everybody makes. And everybody out there, I would imagine, is very similar. We could probably live without you know, attaboys, but being beat down is not an idea of greatness or something that we would love to have happen to us. And it's just, we don't like that. I don't, I don't think I've ever met anybody that does. We have to really figure that, that fine line out. Where and when and how and... Do we walk away from a situation because it's just not serving us or serving our goals or our direction in life, our purpose, our dreams? And sometimes we have to make those really hard decisions that sometimes even be harder to get through than it was from the situation we're trying to walk away from. You have to make decisions that really come down to your welfare. And I say that not to be selfish, but we are here running our own race. We are born by ourselves. We are going to die by ourselves. I'm not saying literally, but you, you understand my point. Is that we come into this world with a mission. We're going to go out whether we, may, we reach those missions or not. And that is our choice and our, what's the right word? And I guess choice is the best word is that we are here to create and to do something, to attain something, to accomplish something. And many of those things that come into our life are simply training us or put in our lives to either motivate us or, or cause us to move in a different direction. In the case of my soccer team, I believe that it was trying to get my attention that maybe I'm not putting everything I could into this game. And that I was really not giving the team what they needed. And so I needed to be slamboozled. I don't know about you or your spirit guides, but mine don't play around. They will hit me upside my head physically, emotionally, however they need to do it to get my attention. And that's probably what, exactly what was happening. I'm kind of working this out as I'm talking to you guys. So we have to make decisions in life that are going to be tough. They're going to be hard. But we have to remember that it is not being selfish to take care of yourself. I'm not saying you should not take care of others. If you have a wife or a husband and you have kids and you have family, you know, yes. But if you give all of yourself away by helping everybody and giving everything that you have and you have nothing left for you, how are you going to get through life, you know, effectively? At the same time, you have to, to balance what you want and what you need to accomplish in this life or what you have decided you would like to accomplish. And you can't do that if all your energy has been given away, either by you physically and giving it away or you're allowing the mental drain to happen like I was on my soccer team, right? That happens. We have to be careful what we surround ourselves with, what situations we allow to continue because our subconscious takes in everything, absolutely everything. There is no filter. 
And the subconscious is what is the program that, that runs our life. You've probably heard me say this many times. That is where the hardwiring begins. All the neurons connecting and patterns develop. And it doesn't know the difference between reality or what you make up. It doesn't question what comes in. It just goes, oh, cool. They look, this is what they like. This, this must be what they like because they're still here. So let's go ahead and hardwire that. The next thing you know, everything in your life's the same. Just like with my sports teams, right? When I look back, it's probably been the same my whole life. Well, I guess it's about time for me to change that pattern, isn't it? And so I'll have to drill down on that for myself. And so when I do these talks, I'm not just out here pointing fingers and saying people should change or these are what my ideas are for how you can move forward. I'm also a human being. I am also somebody that struggles with things. I'm not perfect and I don't want to be perfect. I want to be better than most. Try to be better every day. To, to create something different and better each day as much as I can. If I'm not learning something and growing and going through hard times, I begin to wonder if I am really living life. And so I can tell you, I've been living life the last several months, you know, going through this. And it's really helping me to understand myself a little bit better and really look back at my life and maybe realize that some old patterns that are still need to be changed. I challenge you guys to really take a look at yourselves, to analyze things that you're going through. If they're hard, then there's probably a lesson in there that you need to learn. And some of these lessons might be what I've talked about. You know, and actually do the due diligence and actually dig into yourself and try to figure out what it is that's going on that might be causing the same things to happen in your life over and over and over. Now, let's just face it. If you don't change something, things will remain the same. The only way things change is if something changes. If you continue to do everything the same every day, the same ideas, the same mentality, allow the same things in your life, your life is going to be exactly the same every day. And maybe you, there's people that like that, I guess, I suppose. I like to be challenged every day to be different, to have something new. And boy, I tell you, you got to be careful what you ask for because, wow, the job I have, I am always being challenged. Anyway, I'll go ahead and digress and kind of wind this down. But once again, I challenge you guys to maybe take some time, find a quiet place and really look at your life and, and see and discover the areas in your life that might need some change, might need some attention, and might need to go in a different direction. It's okay to change. It's okay to walk away. It is okay to analyze, to try something new, because we have a short time on this planet. Let's use it to our best ability and become a, the best version of ourselves that we can. Every day should be a little bit better we might take a step back, but two steps forward. We should always strive to move forward, become somebody better every single day. I look forward to hearing from you guys on this subject. If you would go to my website at lifebymazak.com, L-I-F-E-B-Y-M-A-Z-A-K.com. Contact page is there. You can figure out how to reach me and let's have a conversation because I I learn from you, you learn from me, and we all learn together. So let's have a conversation. I look forward to hearing from you. You will always hear from me. Stay strong and live your life.